Hey, welcome to another episode of Protome Plays Mario Maker 2. I really want to say Protome Plays Glitch Free Gaming, which is not the name of the show. That's the name of the channel. <laughs> um, anyway, let's start right off bat. We're going to play Goombud Tower by Trash Tabby. Same name on the forums. Let's give it a shot. Uh, did Trash Tabby say anything in particular on the forum? Made my first level, it's a bit rough, but I think I did an okay the job designing it for my first time doing that. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's off to a good start, it looks very Mario World-ish. That's a phrase you can use, right? Oh god. Well, I'm already off to... Oh. oh god. Give me these coins. Hi, Goombud. Are those Goombuds? Is that their name? I don't think I actually know their name. I feel like every time I try to remember names of enemies in Mario, it's like when you go to a family event and you're like, I, you're like my cousin or something. I know you, but I've not seen you since as a kid. But I do know you, so I should probably know your name. That's right, Mario enemies are like family members. Oh, I mean, that's just me, because I'm bad at, you know, things. Oh god, oh god. Oh, this bit is... Pretty good. Sorry, I had to focus for a second there. I almost feel like that starting bit is, like, misleading. Because... It makes you f oh, whoops. You can't jump on it if it's already on the ground. Uh, it makes you feel as if the whole level's gonna be that easy. And you get in here and it's actually a bit of platforming. Because that first bit is maybe a bit too long for a kind of like introduction of concept, if that makes sense. It's a really minor complaint. It's not a <laughs> not really a complaint. But this section's real cool. Oh god damn, I'm so stupid. Oh, and I put them in the thing. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you could grab things that were on the claw. That's useful to know for later. Maybe I can try and design a level around that. Or more likely someone smarter can. Because I haven't even finished my basic level yet. Alright. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay. No wings for any of you. That's cool. Oh god. Oh no. Well, I got the one up. Uh, I hope that beeping didn't show up in the recording. My headphones are dying. Hopefully they'll last. I liked it. That was a cool level. Good job, Trash Tabby. Yeah, I'd say the second half is much better than the first half, but the first half isn't bad or anything, it's just a bit easy. But that second half was really fun. I'd love to play like a, a longer level that played like that. Because that was cool. Anyway, on to the next one. Next up we have Boom Boom's Treacherous Castle by And Jello on here and Solid Jello on the forum. Um, forgot to mention at the start, but all these levels are from the Waypoint forums. We're like a billion episodes in by now. The link's in the description below. You should know this. Angela says that this is them trying to adhere to a traditional approach. They want to make a Super Mario 3 castle level. Medium difficulty. Cool. I like traditional feeling levels. I also like Mario Bros. 3. I feel like the more I play Mario Maker 2... Oh god, I really just botched even saying Mario Maker 2 there. Um, the more I play Mario Maker 2, the more I think that Mario Bros. 3 might be my favourite Mario game. For a long time I thought it was Worlds. 
that's what I grew up with. But three is just so good. Oh god, that was that was stupid. I shouldn't have died there. I think it's got great music. I love the art. Not that I don't love any of these things in the world, but there's something about three that's so good. I grew up playing the uh, like the. I think I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I grew up playing the All Stars version of three. That was stupid. Um, not playing the All Stars version. Me running into lava. Uh, which redid all the graphics and stuff. And so I was really weirded out. Less so with Mario 3, more so with Mario 2. When I played Mario 2 for the first time, like on NES, or, or you know, an emulated version of it on like WiiWare or something like that. I think it was actually specifically on the Wii Virtual Console. Um, first time I played that version of the game, I was like, why does this look so bad? This isn't what Mario 2 looks like. What is this nonsense? Mario 2 looks like nice. And I'd never got quite as bad, like that feeling, quite as bad as Mario 3. But it's definitely there a bit. But I actually really like how Mario 3 looks. Like standard Mario 3. Yay! Bonus room! Because we killed the boss. We made this one, I don't care about the one up. One up's are useless. Oh, there's more. I mean, I assume there's an actual boss fight in this. I'm not just. But that's cool, there's a mid boss, if nothing else. It's a cool level. Like, it is very traditional, it's just like. I don't want to say simple, because simple makes it sound easy, but it's like, it's got a little bit of difficulty to it, but it's like straightforward platforming, it's not doing any weird puzzly things or gimmicks or anything, it's just. Here's some Mario stuff. These are the kind of levels that, like I like trying to make. And then fail at it because I'm not very good at making levels. I studied game development. I should literally be better at this. Too fair though, I studied games programming. Oh, that was stupid. Nope. Nope. Oh no. What are you meant to do there? Yeah, I studied games programming and then went on to use that very briefly in my career and realized I don't really like making games. I like playing games. Like I do kinda like playing games but uh, making games but not as a career. Is this a I don't know. I was like there's nothing coming out of this one, is it secret? Um Like I like making games but not as a job. Also, it's not very good at it, to be honest. I found other lanes of programming that I'm better at. And that, you know, the career path isn't a disaster. Getting into game development and getting paid for game development and all that is hard. Harder I just make like little peek away games in my spare time. Go away. Uh, speaking of making games though, a friend of mine, Tom, started the channel, uh, which I may be doing some collab, 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 collaboration videos with. Uh, his channel is a tutorial channel for making games using Godot. Godot? Good Godot? I, I don't know how you pronounce it. I know there's a big argument about how you pronounce it. Uh, as always, I went off on a bit of tangent, but I was really enjoying that level. <laughs> that level was really cool. That's 
One of the better, like, kind of traditional levels we've played. Five star, five star cross, five star trough. I like that level. I play that level again. I play a whole game of those levels. Good job, Angelo. On to the next one. Next up, we have Yoshi's Yummy Yump Party by Slime Siren. Slime Siren on the forums as well. Yoshi's invited you to the party, but you must yump to get there. Right. Right. I don't know what yump is, but okay. Um, cool. Let's get this a shot. Um, but yes, my friend Tom, I'll put a link in the description somewhere. Uh, he's doing a channel that's game development tutorials, which is quite cool. Um, I have literally worked with Tom before. Oh, this is a... This is a short one, huh? Oh, that's pretty cool. So automates up there. Uh, yeah, I worked with Tom before, so I know that he's kind of... He knows his shit. Oh, I don't want to swear on these. Oh, well. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's pretty short. Oh, I like the club puts you on Yoshi. That's smart. That's a good little low. Yump. So that's where Yump is, I guess. Cool idea. All right. Good job, Slime Siren. That was that was a good one. Next up, we have a study of bombs by DW. DW on the forums as well. We've played a couple of DWs. I think we've played a couple of everyone's levels that we've played on this episode so far. Um, but yeah, this one they described in the forums as basically being a kind of uh, like a series of examples of what you can do with bombs. I'm trying to find the exact word. Uh, it's about some of the things you can do with bombs. A collection of small vignettes. So that's cool, so like, here's a timer, you can make a timer with bombs, which is quite cool. Do that. And then the bombs not only bring down the thing that lets us out, it also brought down that second cannon to block the first one, so it doesn't spit any more bombs out. So it's another interesting thing. I didn't know you could do that. That's pretty silly. Why can you do that? Well, that one's new for me. Oh god, I messed that up, didn't I? Can you not slide down things in Mario 1? I guess not. Okay, and then this one's going to blow the bomb up here, which will open up this thing. That's a bit more straightforward. The holding you in place with the, the block is not a thing I've seen before. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so this is going to carry the bomb over. That's pretty smart. You know, your level's more impressive than you let it on to be. You were just like, oh, it's just some bomb stuff. Some really smart bomb stuff, though. That's pretty cool. Stupid. I think it is. I don't know what though. Why did the timer take so much longer that first time? Let's just pile up a bunch of bombs up here. Stop killing my bomb friends. Okay. 
Okay. Dang. At this point, I'm just messing up. It's gonna be a trick to this bit, right? Fast enough that this doesn't shoot. There we go. Easy. I'm just stupid. So if you get up there fast enough, you can stop it from shooting out that one. Okay, this is a good ping one up. And go up here. <laughs> That's pretty cool though, putting it in the, the little. Uh, what do you call those? The little hovercraft things. Oh, this doesn't work. Oh, there's time. I need to ignite the bomb first and then send it down. I'm gonna mess this one up. On purpose, obviously. And then drop this one down. It's a smart idea. It's a cool boss fight. I've not seen... I've seen bomb-based... I've made bomb-based, you know, boss fights before. Not this kind. This is smart. Smarter than mine for sure. There's so many bombs down there. <laughs> All right, we're free. Hey, that was cool. Again, I think you undersold this DW because you were like, "Hey, <laughs> this one guy missed the flag." Um, yeah, that's definitely stuff that you can use bombs for, but they're, that's really smart stuff you can use bombs for. I'm going to steal some of that at some point. Nah, I probably won't, because I'm bad, but it's cool. On to the next one. Next up, we have Mario Ski Day by Megam. I never found out how to pronounce your name properly. I'm sorry. Um, they describe this as Mario's got a day off and a ski pass. Take a relaxing slide down Mount Koopa. Very simple level, it should be a breeze. If you feel like a breather, take a relaxing ski. Cool. Clear is not too bad. Um, if I remember right, my games. I think every one of these levels we're playing are by people who we have played levels from multiple times already. Which is not a bad thing. It's a good little community. Ski lift. Plus, can be a yeah okay. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a claw. Of course, it'll be a claw. What else could you use? I'm sure you can use something. Um, this is pretty. All these people coming down. They've been skiing already. I've never been skiing. I don't know if that's how ski lifts work. I assume the people coming down are people that've been skiing before, or people that forgot to get off. Is that a thing that actually happens? I've only seen ski lifts in like TV shows. I should go skiing. Yay! I love this music. I say it every time, but it's because it's so good. It's the best Mario 64 music. It's possibly the best Mario music. Oh, I messed that up. This is great. It is very simple, very easy. Oh, the music went. Right. All right, back on the ski lift. I wonder if I go back on the ski lift if it would take me back. Is it actually set up that way? Oh, the things are gone. Oh, we'll never know. I bet it is though. I bet that would actually take you back. Which would be cool. Ooh. Yeah, it was a nice one. Nice and easy. I like it. Some good art on there. Someone literally said, like, woo and the thing. I liked it. That was a nice thematic level. Next up, we have Mario's Athletics by Cody ZU or Cody Davies TV on the forum. 
Uh, standard level in the style of Super Mario Bros. 3. Let's go! Decent complete, right? So it's probably not too hard. Lots of good kind of like traditional levels in this episode. And again, Cody's a you, someone whose levels we've played before. And I remember them being good, but to be fair, I don't think I've played... I think the only bad levels I've played in this show have been at the end of an episode when I've done a like random one off of the like zero playlist. And even then, they weren't that bad. We just weren't up to the Waypoint community standards. <laughs> but across the board, everyone's been making cool levels. Lots of good traditional levels, lots of good puzzle levels. Like, it's a good, a good mix. If only Mario Maker let you, you know, make like playlists or something so we could share them easier. So far, this is a cool. Oh god, never mind. I take it back. It's got the it's got the sun in it. It's terrible. Man, we're going through a heat wave just now in the UK. Like this is too real. It's too real, man. I like this. These little platforms, these wooden kind of platforms, are exactly what Mario Three had in the levels with the sun. Like that's a good touch. That's a good way to make it feel like a Mario 3 level. I think a lot of people take that kind of stuff for granted. I messed that up. Real bad. Good. This means I get to spend more time with my friend, the sun. Yay. Oh, I didn't have the fire flower now. No sun. Leave me alone. Oh god, that's not a good sign. No, 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 no. Okay. Jump him? I mean, jump over him. And s <sighs> Damn it. Damn it. I don't know if it's a universal thing. A universal or a global thing. But in Scotland, jumping someone means something different. I don't know if that's just a Scottish thing. You're coming with me. That was a waste. But it was a fun waste. The best kind of waste. That was the worst time to jump. This level's not that hard. <laughs> I won't die in silly ways. It was bound to happen eventually. I think also I just made my microphone peak for the first time. It's a whole, you know, episode of new things. Um, if you saw the level before this, but the level, oh my god. Some things never change. Oh, that was stupid. Um, the episode before this, I streamed out to Twitch. I don't know how often I'll be doing that. Um, that's why I've not done an R1 in a couple of weeks. I've been busy. Oh god. Uh, yeah, this feels very Mario 3. I always sucked at the sun levels on that too. Um, I don't want to jump into you. I know I can't because it scrolls, but it scares me. Let's be careful here. Right. Let's actually stop and be careful this time. Okay, we did it. Through the desert. That's the end of the level. We did it. Even putting the little turtle there, then there's something Mario 3 did a lot. That was great. Very old school, like very like Mario 3 feeling. Like a little bit of difficulty. Oops, didn't mean go to this. But not, you know. It felt like a Mario 3 level. Like they had some difficulty in them. And it was made more difficult by me being bad at things, which is the real Mario 3 experience. Anyway, go do one more, and that'll be it for this video. Assuming that my laptop battery lasts that long. So next up, and last up, we have Forest Switcheroo by James Tarr. 
We've played a bunch of James Tar levels. They've all been good. As I said before, we haven't played any bad levels on here. No point committing these good levels. Um, the concept behind this, um, according to the forum post, is you have to go all the way to the end, then come all the way back, presumably to go through that door, which then takes you to the goal. But when you come back, uh, or once you get to the end rather, the first time, you'll hit a switch which will flip all these. Um, and it'll make it more difficult, because basically it'll spawn a bunch of enemies. So, for example, here, there's probably some kind of enemy hidden in these blocks. But the way it works is, these blocks can be on or off, and when they're off, they're hollow. And you can position things in the editor on top of them. So, for example, an enemy. But then if they're solid when it runs, then they get deleted as the level spawns in. So I imagine then there's going to be either a door or pipe that we go through to force it to reload. I almost died on a basic enemy. So like these, I bet these spawn those little, um, what do you call them, the little plants. Not piranha plants, or maybe piranha plants, uh, but probably the little black ones based on like the layout of this. And when the level spawned in to start with, they were all lined up in a row with these blocks, and these blocks were solid, and so it killed all of them. By the way, once it comes through, there'll be a bunch of them there. I hope there's not a bunch of enemies here. That'd be cruel. It's probably just an exit. Let's go. I got a little stand there. Oh, go. Oh. Okay, thank god. I didn't... I didn't mean that. Um, so let's see. But yeah, uh, I believe James Tarr in particular has used this... I don't want to call it a trick. Yeah, see, here we go. A bunch of these. So these automatically fall. Most enemies, or all enemies do, I think. Um, so when we came back in here, because we went through the pipe and these were hollow, these all spawned in, then they fell to the ground. Oh, it was a thwomp. I've tried to figure out what this enemy was that was in this space. Of course it was a thwomp. Of course they were all thwomps. Smart. More of the flowers. Uh, but yeah, James Tars used this in... I think James Tars used this in level 4. Again, people were muddled up with what they made. I'm pretty sure they made... Uh, levels had similar idea to this. But it's a cool idea. I've never made anything with it because I'm, like I've said before, I'm not great at level design. But it's a cool idea. I actually really like this in particular, the forcing you to go through the level backwards. That's something that I've wanted to try and figure out how to do. And that's a really good way of doing it. Like, I like that concept, and it's not something Mario Maker's really built for. Uh, cool idea. It's been too much time to try to figure out what she's called meant to post. Um, Mario Maker 2 is not really designed to let you make levels that you go all the way through and then come all the way back through. So it's really cool that they found this kind of cool way to do it. But anyway, that's gonna do it this time for Protome Plays Mario Maker 2. Please watch other videos, like, subscribe. I have a Kill a Kill review up just now, which is, you know, it would be nice if you go and watch that and see what I think of that game. I liked it for what it's worth. Um, but that was all edited and fancy and stuff, so it was way more effort than this video. <laughs> Not that, you know, I like making these videos. Um, we have an unboxing video up for with Ben. Uh, like I said before, hoping to do something with Tom's channel. I'll put a link below to their channel and I'll probably, I'll do like a little announcement video on here saying where that one is, if and when that happens. Um, but yeah, if you want to play my levels, they're here. See ya.